Good morning everybody, DC here. It's the 8th of the 3rd, 21, and this is uh, experiment number 2. Uh, from my last video, we've got um, the magnet here, which is a block magnet, near dimmium magnet, and uh, we've got the setup as a power supply, pulse width modulator, a transformer to high voltage 30,000 volts, and um, we're pulsing again the blotch wall. Well, we're going to have a go at pulsing the blotch wall. The last time I did this, um, I was getting some funny readings. So you'll probably see these funny readings that I'm getting today. And the readings we're taking today, we've got a coil which is um, connected to the magnet. And we're taking the reading from one of the wires coming off the coil to the earth. Okay, um, here's the setup. We've got... 18 volts supply uh, at the moment it's running about 8, eight watts there's nothing going through it at the moment and uh, this is the, the, the setup we've got pulse width modulator car transformer and the coil um, the neodymium magnet down here this is just here for me just I'm doing some uh, tests on the side for the dielectric side of it um, okay, so maybe I just if I just show you this here before it gets the high voltage in, oh, it's, it's broken. <laughs> but that's all it is. It's just a piece of um, copper wire. Look, straightforward copper wire. You can just see the tip here, which is left open, so it it'll spark once it's put inside the magnet and there's and there's a um, high voltage going through. If you look closely, you'll see two marks that I've put on the blue on the plastic insulation. That's just to give me an idea of, of how far the, um, the copper wire is into the magnet. I'm trying to get it around about the centre of the magnet. Okay. So I'm just going to have to put the phone down a minute. So bear with me a minute there. I'll put the phone down while I connect here. You can't get the staff like you used to. Right, there we go. <clears throat> so we're connected up here now, there. And we're just gonna start it. I'll connect, that's connected. Okay, switch on the meter. The meter's taking a reading from this wire, this is from the coil here, which is placed on the magnet. And it, it goes to this probe here which goes down to this red wire, which is a clean earth, which goes to the outside. Obviously, we've got a little bit of background in millivolts here um, going on at the moment, where there's nothing going through it, but obviously a little bit. Right, so I'm going to switch on here. And what I'm going to show you now is a, this, a funny reading here, which is it's a little bit strange, although it's partly expected. Um, Okay, turn on. The first thing you'll probably hear is the spark, the noise of the spark in there. It's turning on. Increase in voltage. Now as soon as that spark came in, did you see that it jumped up to um, AC, 500 volts AC? I'm going to drop the power down a little bit. So now, 250 volts. And this is the, the meter reading. Okay. Now then, I'm going to show you two things now. When the spark jumps across, the voltage jumps up considerably. doubles, basically it doubles. So where's that extra voltage coming from? And also, look at this. You get some funny readings there too. I'm going to... You'll hear the spark, hopefully, change. A little bit. As the voltage changes, 
this is a little bit difficult to show you because I'm I'm doing stuff so again I'm going to drop the input voltage Two sixty or thereabouts volts, but when the spark comes, it jumps up. Now, where's the extra voltage coming from? That's the big question. If you look, look, it tends to suggest that it's drawing more power from the power supply. But the voltage shot's right down to virtually nothing. And we're running at about, at the wall socket, about 40 watts. So, in effect, as I, I suppose it could be said, that we're drawing extra power from the mains wall socket there. Which is interesting that why. So I suppose we're getting more transfer. Um, yeah, it's making some sense to me, so that's where I'm at, I'm at the moment. So, um, what, I'm, what I'm going to try, I've not done this before, folks. Um, I'm just going to shut off the supply here, isn't it? Uh, turn this down on there. Okay. Now, I've not tried it at uh, 24 volts. Around about 24 volts. This little unit, pulse width modulator, will take up to 36 volts. So I might just take, today, I might just take that up to 36 volts. Um, the coil will take 24 volts, that I know. Beyond that, I could blow it up. But anyway, at 24 volts. I'm going to try again now <coughs> at 24 volts. It should make it a bit louder. You have to switch it on. I forgot to switch it on. <laughs> now we're going to overload. Ooh, power going through that now. Wow. Also, the pressure now, it's more sensitive on the pulse modulator. Hmm. So that, that's where I'm at at the moment. I'm actually vibrating the, the uh, I believe I'm vibrating the blotch wall between the north and the south poles on the magnet. So that's the output we're getting. And about, yeah, about 500 volts or there, about. But this is what's interesting. So the draw's gone right up, but the draw's fluctuating and the voltage is fluctuating. Yet here, we're steady at about 40 watts, 39 watts. Interesting stuff. Um, can't wait to do more experiments. Still waiting for um, my function generator. I'm still waiting for my um, oscilloscope, so when it comes, we can make progress. DC signing out, hope you're enjoying.